Namaste. So it's the auspicious hour of the morning. The sun is just coming up and the rays of golden light illuminate everything. And in the same way, the Lakshmi Tantra is like the rising sun. The rays of golden light illuminate everything and also bring the most auspicious results. That's another way of saying that if you practice this Tantra, it's magic. Tantra actually means magic, you know? Magic with a CK at the end. <laughs> the kind of magic that actually works in the real world. Not fantasy magic like Harry Potter, that's crazy. But real magic, and how does real magic work? By changing your karma. So Lakshmi Tantra, although it also talks about cosmology and so many other things, is really about changing your karma so that you have prosperity, wisdom, and ultimately liberation from all material suffering. So it's better I should be quiet and <laughs> let Lakshmi describe her Tantra in her own words. This is the best of Tantras, which contains all that the wise know to be truth. Just as the science of liberation excels amongst all the various sciences, the brahmana amongst all bipeds, the cow amongst all quadrupeds, gold amongst all metals, and kaustuba among all gems, a mother amongst all superiors, and a son amongst all claimants, manas, the mind, amongst all senses, and the wind amongst all that is mobile, meru amongst all mountains, and ganga amongst all rivers, the householder amongst all ranks of life, and vasishta amongst all performers of japa, meditative prayer, absolute renunciation amongst all true states, and visionary knowledge amongst all that is profitable. So is this Tantra the best of all Tantras dealing with reality. So what is reality? <laughs> it's certainly not this world that we perceive through the senses. It's more the intuitive world that we perceive through the mind and through the revealed knowledge given in the scriptures. Now, the very interesting thing is that the knowledge in the scriptures, although it's often metaphorical in its expression, is absolute truth in its application. This is very hard for Western people to understand because we're given an education to condition us to literal understanding rather than metaphorical understanding. So we tend to take the stories in the scriptures as simply myths, but they're not. They're actually directions on how to dream Huh? The most influential people throughout history have been dreamers. I love to use the example of Einstein. Einstein never set foot in a physics lab. He came up with his theory of relativity simply by thinking about it, dreaming. How did he do that? because he understood the nature of the universe. He understood cosmology. So Lakshmi Tantra gives a very elaborate description of Vedic cosmology, which if you understand it properly and use it to think, use it to dream, 
you can basically write your own ticket. You can, you can pretty much determine where you're going to go in the next life and so on. By creating karma and the rituals given in the Lakshmi Tantra and other Tantras also give us means of manipulating and changing our karma so that we attain the destination that we desire. See, so the law of the universe, karma, the law of cause and effect is administered by the goddess. Uh, she is the one, she is the doer. Everything that happens, happens because of her. She is the Shakti, the power. So while religion type people like to worship the powerful, the male gods, the Tantrikas worship the female gods because they are the power. They are the business end. Huh? They're the ones who get things done. Instead of, you know, uh, worshiping the, the figurehead, the Tantrika worships the power behind the throne. <laughs> so that is why this is so uh, powerful, an approach to self-realization. The Tantra scriptures in particular, and the Sri Vidya in general, cover the entire range of the path, all four vadas. Now we've talked about the four vadas so many times, I'm not gonna put the diagram up again, but you should go and look at our other videos and understand it, because we're going to use that as a background for our understanding of Lakshmi Tantra. She gives a lot of instructions in rituals and mantras. And if you follow these and you perform the ritual and you chant the mantra, you can do just about anything you want. Uh, the resources will come. And really, the whole purpose of it is not about getting rich. You know, a lot of people emphasize the nature of Lakshmi as money, right? But the whole purpose of money is not simply to have it, it's to use it to gain your desires. And of course, the greatest desire is the desire for liberation, for the end of all desires. And when one attains that, well, there's just no pleasure greater in all of existence than the complete cessation of desire. You know, this is the, the enlightenment that all the great sages attained. And the way they attained it was through the application of these instructions. Now, here's some more description of the Lakshmi Tantra. Herein, the essence, traits, and majesty of God as Vasudeva, Vishnu, Narayana, the preceptor, the guru, and myself are duly described. Those who possess a clear grasp of true knowledge adhere to this, which is a view of myself. Holding on to this ladder, they climb up step by step to the supreme state of existence. This is supreme amongst all tantras and is stamped by a name that is identical with mine. So you see, the name of God, or goddess, Lakshmi Narayan, huh? Shiva Shakti. You know, the, this is just a different view of the same mountain. And she's providing this ladder uh, in some of the hills around Tiruvannamalai district. The ascent is so steep that it has to be made by means of a ladder and or uh, metal stakes connected by chains, which you cling to as you ascend to the top. And uh, th this is the way it gets in spiritual life. As you near the top, it gets steeper and steeper, and the consequences of any fall are greater. So we need some assistance. We need a structure. 
We need a means of elevating ourselves that can reach the greatest heights. And that is given in this Tantra. Now, who is this Tantra for? Clearly, this is not a book that is meant for just anybody. There are certain qualifications. Just as we went over in the series on Vedanta Sutra, there are certain qualifications in order to be able to study this work and to apply it properly. This teaching should be given only to a person of high moral standing who is clean, practices austerities, is well versed in the teachings of the Vedas and Tantras, who is especially devoted to me and cherishes great devotion for Vasudev Janardana, who observes the pure vow of Pancharatra, is clever and only acts virtuously. One should not teach this Tantra to a person who has not taken the ritual bath, signifying acceptance of a vow to observe the Pancharatra religion, nor to a disloyal person, nor to a person ignorant of the teachings of Tantra, nor to someone who is prone to jealousy, nor to someone who is not a devotee of Vasudeva, and not to anybody who is not a devotee of mine. So Goddess is very clear about this. Who is Vasudeva? Uh, who is Narayana? The consort of Lakshmi. Well, he represents the sum total of consciousness in the universe, just as she represents the sum total of ego. So these are very deep understandings, and we'll go into them as we go through the book, chapter by chapter. But the important thing to understand is that just as Shiva and Shakti are one view of God and Goddess, Lakshmi Narayan is another view of the same thing. Huh? You know, stupid people are fighting about who is, who is better, Vishnu, or Shiva, you know, this is useless, this is pointless, because they're the same. They're just a different view of the same subject, the same phenomenon, which is basically the universal uh, root of everything that exists. So, this is the highest level understanding. This is the transcendental view, as we talked about in a recent video. Oh, and of course, there's more. The four topics described in Lakshmi Tantra are Charya, iconography and architecture, Kriya, ritual ceremonies, Jnana, philosophy and cosmogony, and yoga, meditation. It also contains descriptions of old customs, ancient times and history, as well as of diverse secret rituals, and is embellished with many useful sayings so as always to convince people. How does one become convinced of the truth of a scripture? Well, the best way is to practice it and get the result. But this practice is useless without faith. And the way to develop faith is by hearing. So one should hear the scripture, not from just anybody, and certainly not from a professional who's trying to make money off of it, but from a devotee, from a realized being someone who has realized the purport of the scripture and who has practiced the methods in the scriptures. Now in Tantra, Tantra is very controversial because Tantra also uses sexual methods. And these methods are not described in detail, but they're mentioned in Lakshmi Tantra. And there's quite a bit of discussion about them. They're the ethics of them and the morality of the sexual practices. 
but the actual practices are quite secret. They're confidential, and they're only passed down by people who know them, who have actually done them. Now then, there's a whole bunch of external rituals connected with those practices, and that is described in detail. Although even some of those details aren't present in this Tantra, but they are in others, and we have to go to them for clarification. But that's okay. The important thing is that Lakshmi Tantra gives the outline of what's called the Pancharatra. The Pancharatra means the five elements, or the five, literally, the five chariots, uh, the, or thrones. And these are the, the important five elements of Tantra practice. And we're going to get into this in detail in this series so that this is not too long. Uh, I just want to highly recommend that you download the book. The link is in the video description here. Download and read the introduction and the first chapter. We're going to go over the first chapter in the next video. So you should read the first chapter so that you know what we're talking about, <laughs> so that you have the context, so you understand the meaning of this great work. And we're going to proceed like that through the whole book. There's 50 chapters that we're going to go over. And then uh, we'll try to summarize each chapter in one video. Some of the videos may get a little long as a result, but that's okay. This is a very centrally important work. And if you're into Tantra, if you're into Sri Vidya, it's one that you should study. Even though you are perhaps uh, identify as a Shaivite, uh, it's important to study it because one of the criteria given in the scriptures for the study of Tantra is that you should be familiar with Shiva Shakti. So this is the background. And remember, context creates meaning. So the more background you have in Tantra specifically and Sri Vidya in general, the more meaningful this work will be for you and the more benefit you can get out of the practice of what's given herein. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.